Uh, it's now my pleasure to hear from our high school uh, spotlight group uh, from Fairfield Ludlow High School in Fairfield and uh, Vanessa Montorsi, Director of Pupil Services and Counseling, uh, will take it away and uh, have her team uh, share the wonderful DEI work that's going on at Fairfield Ludlow. So thank you and welcome. Thank you so much, Bill. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen really quick. Um, I'll, I'm going to give a quick shout out actually to Rogers Park Middle School. I'm a former phys ed teacher turned school counselor. So adventure based learning um, is near and dear to my heart. So kudos to that middle school for implementing that program. Um, I absolutely loved it. That's great. So uh, thank you again, Bill. Uh, my name is Vanessa Montorsi. I'm the Director of People Services and Counseling here at Fairfield Lundell High School. I'm joined by three of my amazing colleagues, Lauren Marcello, who is a social studies teacher, Colleen Sousa, who is our social studies department chair, and Barry Rabin, who is one of our house principals. So throughout our presentation this afternoon, we're going to talk a little bit about how we got started with implementing DEI at FLHS the work that we did this summer in order to prepare implementing PD to our staff and activities that we implemented with our students and where we're going with, with this initiative. Well, first, and Mr. Watson from Danbury talked a little bit about it as to what he's doing at his school, um, but just like all schools across the state, you know, we come up with three goals every year. And we as an admin team, when we're looking at the three goals, we specifically put our number one goal as DEI. Um, not only did we feel that this was important as an admin team, um, but we received feedback from students, staff, and other stakeholders who wanted to support this initiative. I think it's really important to recognize that when talking about DEI, nobody has all the right answers. But if you approach this work with an open heart, an open mind, and open ears, willing to listen to one another without judgment, um, it really sets you on the path to succeed. There are gonna be a variety of emotions when you talk about DEI. Um, some people are gonna be a little nervous or scared. Some people are gonna be excited. Um, and some people may feel both emotions and, and that's okay. So we wanna validate that and um, understand that we're gonna make mistakes along the way, but we're going to learn together. And that's why you can see Dr. Brene Brown's quote at the top of this slide, you know, I see you, I hear you, I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to keep listening and asking questions. So how we started was last spring, um, Lauren and Colleen, who you will hear from shortly, brought this forward to us and wanting to address staff and student concerns about the need for actual visual action and intentional programming on a building level, um, unfortunately, following multiple incidents that occurred in Fairfield. And it didn't just occur at the high school level, uh, there are incidents that occurred at the middle school and elementary schools as well. Um, and you can see here, we actually had a student organized walkout, which was great. Um, and then what happened was at the end of last summer, we had a small group of staff, about 30, um, who chose to read Liz Kleinrock's Start Here, Start Now book as an optional text. Um, and those staff got together this summer. And um, our next presenter will talk just a little bit about that. Hey everyone. Um, so Colleen and I uh, were sort of moved to get together a group of teachers after having a lot of individual conversations in our classrooms um, with our students who felt as though not enough was being done tangibly that they could see um, to address some of these incidents that had been plaguing our school community in our town community at large. Um, so we initially had a group of teachers um, get together at the end of the spring. Um, we sent just feelers out, anyone that's interested in uh, DEI work, you know, feel free to show up. And we had probably over 30 teachers who were really eager to be a part of the solution. Um, and so we um, were able to meet over the summer as a smaller group um, in order to try to figure out our plan um, for the, the next year. So the first thing we recognized right away was the need to craft a DEI statement. Um, we often expect our students to sort of know our values. And in this case, we didn't even have them articulated. So that seemed like a rational first step and a first place to start. Um, and then we also were trying to figure out, you know, how do we make this an actionable plan that's going to reach the most amount of students possible? Um, and what avenue did we want to pursue in order to make that a reality? We also recognized um, the overwhelming need for staff training and professional development 
um, because we know that our colleagues uh, often shied away from some of these difficult conversations due to their um, uncomfortableness with some of these topics. So how did we how do we prepare them to have those conversations? Um, so our DEI statement um, was an effort of that first group of teachers that met over the summer. Um, we drafted sort of a draft, and then we thought it was really important to get student um, feedback. So we have a really amazing student-led equity group here at Fairford Ludlow High School called Youth for Equity. Um, and we basically gave them the statement and said, we want you to sort of pick it apart, tell us what you think, make revisions, make additions. Um, and through their feedback, you know, we sort of came up with this final product um, that we felt both students and staff, you know, would be receptive to. Um, and so some of the things we realized um, over the summer was that, you know, we do have some existing structures that could lend itself to this work. Um, I think as teachers, you know, often the feedback we get, you know, from PDs is sometimes, well, like, yeah, in theory, that's great, but how do I actually practically make this a reality in my classroom? And the great thing about Liz uh, Kleinroth's book is we could tell staff to read it and they would see, you know, specific resources that are classroom ready um, templates, um, lesson plans, all ready to go so that there wasn't a lot of work on the teacher's um, part to sort of make that happen. Um, we also, you know, got a lot of feedback from students about how, you know, consistency was the biggest issue. They said, you know, I have some teachers who are really comfortable talking about these conversations and others who never mention a word. Um, and how did we ensure that, you know, as many teachers as possible were engaging in DEI work. And so we sort of came to the conclusion that we should utilize our advisory um, activity period. We have a, about um, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes built in um, to our home rooms, um, I think once a month. And we said, this is a time in which we can ensure that every home room, which is every student, is getting access to these lessons. And so we decided to spend a lot of the summer really planning out the advisory lessons for the first three months um, in coordination with faculty meetings so that staff felt like they had enough time to prepare um, and get more comfortable or ask questions before they actually had to give the advisory lesson to students. Um, we also were eager to work with the Anti-Defamation League. Um, we had been using a lot of their uh, lessons as part of our advisory lessons. So um, we wanted to set the goal for being a no place for hate um, school as well. My um, colleague Colleen is gonna talk about also our, our need for an initial PD right out the gate at the start of this school year. Um, so that staff knew that this was a huge priority for us moving forward. Hi everyone. I'm sorry, the announcements are going off. I'm Colleen. Um, I'm going to just talk you through the first few months of school and how we start to roll out our DEI plan. So in August, right before our teachers came back, the entire Fairfield Public Schools admin team actually participated in an equity training with Crack as well as Drakes and Burton. Um, and then they were able to, you know, pass on that training to all of their respective buildings. But at Ludlow, we were really fortunate that our admin team worked with us as an equity committee to think about how we could take the PD that they received and translate it into our very first day back to school professional development so that we could set the tone for the school year. So our first day back, we worked together with that information to First of all, establish a sense of urgency to encourage staff buy-in. We really wanted to show our data as well as some anecdotal evidence from the school counselors um, to make this work relevant and help everyone understand that this is real and it is affecting our students and we need to be doing better for them. So together on those first, that first day of school, we did a land acknowledgement. We also did a definition of terms as well as reviewing that data, which was very successful. And then we moved into actually the delivery to the students through advisory. So we actually added some extra advisory periods. Lauren was mentioning, you know, we had this already built into the framework of our schedule. So we added some extra advisory periods so that we had more contact time with students to be delivering these lessons. Um, so through September and October, we really focused on um, 
names identity as well as reflection upon the past few school years that had such a tremendous amount of upheaval. So our very first lesson was about names and understanding the importance of names, pronunciations, pronouns. We had all students actually make their own name card with their pronouns so that all students would feel safe and comfortable really expressing their identity and who they were. We also did a group reflection where we talked about lessons that we can take from 2020 and 2021 and turn it into a more successful school year for all. Continued in October, we did some identity mapping where students um, talked about and thought about really parts of identity that are visible versus invisible and how that might impact the way that students relate to one another. We also, as we began this work, really were cognizant of checking in with students and staff about how these lessons were going. And one of the things that we recognized was that at, in two years of COVID school really prevented some of the relationships that had typically been built in homeroom from being built effectively. So we kind of slowed down a little bit um, and focused some of our advisory time over the next few weeks to relationship building so that we had a foundation there to have some of those more challenging conversations. But one thing that we did want to make sure that we did within the month of October is we had a special lesson for our 12th graders on costumes and cultural appropriation so we can make sure that they were all participating in their Halloween festivities responsibly and appropriately. Thank you. So Colleen and I had had the opportunity during the summer to work with Facing History, and we really wanted to bring some of their work into our school year. So what we had learned in the equity and justice workshop that they had um, offered over the summer, we connected um, Facing History to the November PD for the English and History departments, and they did a lesson with all of those teachers on fostering civil discourse in the classroom. How do we talk about issues that matter? And then that transitioned really well particularly for those teachers into our December advisory, where we introduced the ADL's No Place for Hate Pledge. So we have an ADL committee that's made up of students, staff, and parents. Some of the students on the committee created a video for us. And then at the December advisory, all the students had the opportunity to sign the pledge, which we have all hanging up in one of the um, boards in the front of the building. From there, in January, we wanted to continue with that work. There's so much momentum that you lose kind of over that break. And then with us kind of having midterms that we hadn't had in a while um, that, you know, we had an early release day on a Friday afternoon of a long weekend in January. And the hardest part is trying to find out when the best way and the best um, approaches to really engage teachers while still honoring the fact that we're all pretty exhausted. And this has been a lot this year. So um, we ended up in that afternoon giving teachers some options in terms of what they wanted to explore further. You know, at the end of the day, one of the things that, you know, we've talked about and we have to talk about as a faculty is that even amongst the four of us, we're four white women. So we can't speak for everybody's experience or, you know, we have our own lens. So trying to bring that forward into some of the conversations is really important. So among the options we provided to teachers in January was to learn about colorblindness, equity and grading practices, you know, the intersection between DEI and SEL, as we've talked about with all the schools today. And then that work about engaging in difficult conversations. And we brought in both some of the excerpts from uh, Start Here, Start Now, and then also work with Facing History. Shortly after that, we did an ADL activity on intentional acts of respect. All of the English classes brought their students to the auditorium. Students had to line up on a spectrum. You know, how respectful or disrespectful do you feel like our school is? And that led into our next advisory topic where then we unpack them a little bit more in each of those advisories homerooms. So then um, moving into February, Colleen and Lauren and you know, some of the work that we had done over the summer was really to find content specific lessons that teachers could use in their classrooms. We don't want it to just exist in advisory but really get into more of the day-to-day -day work that teachers and students are doing. So they um, helped to kind of hone a selection of options about ways that we can include um, black voices and um, figures in our work during Black History Month. That brought us to March. And um, what we did at the beginning of this month is we're now looking at the end of March. Uh, we had the students in their advisory look at school survey data that related to belonging and respect. And we had students in their um, teachers talk about what surprised them, what didn't surprise them. And this was the results of our students having been surveyed about the ways that they saw people being um, kind of treated fairly or, or singled out. And then uh, a couple of weeks ago, we finally had kind of one of our most 
kind of our biggest activities, which is working with the ADL to do the No Place for Hate assembly. We did it with our 10th graders. We've done it in the past with are now 11th and 12th graders, but the 10th graders didn't do it last year because of COVID and our hybrid situation. We um, did it with them and we hope to do that again next year with the 10th graders to kind of continue the cycle of having everyone involved. 10th graders had the assembly. We had panelists from our 10th, 11th and 12th graders who spoke to their experiences. And then we had breakout sessions where they each had an opportunity to speak with their homeroom group um, and plan for next steps for what we need to do as a school community. Future plans, uh, what we hope to do is obviously going to continue the work to be a no place for hate school, as Barry had just mentioned. Um, and we're also going to include in that work the intentional acts of respect activity. I mean, this comes out of the book club related to Channel Kindness by Lady Gaga's Born This Way reporters that she started with her mother um, to help create a kinder and braver world. Um, we are going to share that DEI statement that Lauren shared with you earlier with all stakeholders throughout our community, um, including our new DEI director who started this past November. Um, we're going to reflect on the progress and set goals for next year as to how we want to improve and what else we'd like to embed um, into our current programming. And then we're hoping to look into restorative practices training um, specifically for our deans. And then really some of the advice that, that we had talked about that we thought would be helpful for you if you plan to implement DEI uh, priorities at your school is, is to one, just acknowledge what you know, um, including your biases and recognizing that you're not an expert, none of us are, um, and just start your learning. And, and we've given you a bunch of great resources um, today and, and they'll be on our, uh, the end of our PowerPoint as well. Um, definitely develop a vision and purpose to guide that work, I can tell you, Almost every single meeting I go to when we're starting to plan for the future or develop a new program, um, this is the first thing that comes up. Does it support DEI work? Creating a calendar. Um, this has been extremely helpful to us. It's almost like we've created a contract with ourselves, with our school, and for our students and, and teachers and staff um, that we are going to engage in this work. It's on the calendar, and that calendar is actually sent to everybody so everybody can see it, um, that we're going to be work focusing on that. Creating a curriculum for an advisory. Um, so we're going to continue to do that. We've created that already. So um, including that and aligning it to your vision and, and creating maybe a week by week development of that um, and giving yourself flexibility to make changes on earlier. Say, you know, we did make changes. Um, we had to include relationship building. We felt that that was a really important part before diving in deeper. So allowing yourself that flexibility to make changes as needed. Certainly working with outside agencies and or your own student groups, there's nothing better than listening to your own students because they live and breathe in your school every single day. So they know um, what, what they would like to see in the future. So we tapped into our diversity clubs, you know, our GSA, um, ADL, and the Facing um, History, and, and, uh, and some online resources too. Here's some uh, resources and helpful materials for you. Um, these are actual links. I can provide Bill a copy of this PowerPoint and if, if anybody would like it, um, he can send it out to anybody so you can have access to all of our work. But thank you so much for listening to our presentation. It was an, an honor and privilege to be here uh, this afternoon. So thank you. Uh, thank you uh, all from uh, Fairfield Ludlow High School. And yes, we will be sharing um, recording of uh, all the presentations and uh, the PowerPoints and, and these terrific resources. So um, I just appreciate you so much and the work uh, that you're doing and the terrific presentation you gave today. And uh, to all of our school uh, spotlight presenters, uh, we're very grateful for the excellent work you're doing in your schools and for sharing all of your experiences and insights uh, with us today.